Yo, what's up, everybody? You are now listening to the East Side with love. As always, it's your boy, Kosher. And we got a special edition. Uh, first main, well, I should say, yeah. It's a, actually it's not even a main, but it's the first UFC pay-per-view match card. Yeah, let's say card yep. of 2020. You know who I still gotta speak this with? My oh, man, Remy Say. What's going on, Remy Say? How you doing, bro? What's good, everybody? Real happy to be here and talk about another year of uh, UFC fights and pay per views, man. Oh, I see. I love how you talked at it, manifested that. He said another year. Okay, so he's he's with us for another year, everybody. Clap <laughs> our hands. Woo! You know, you know. <laughs> happy New Year, Remy Say, man. How you doing, bro, bro? Pretty good, fam. I'm looking forward to a good 2020. We've been uh we've been doing this for a while now, so yeah, I'm man. pretty happy. Yeah, man. The, the, you know that's that's dope. Thank you for uh, you know I appreciate your time, I appreciate your intellect, man, and and uh, entertaining the fans. So this is uh you what UFC 248, 247. We got 246. Damn. Okay. See. Everybody's like, what the heck's going on, Coach? You should have had your information. I got my information. Hold on. UFC 246. <laughs> I know who's fighting at least. Let me tell him who's fighting at least. Let him know. Let him All know. All right. That man is finally back. That man from Dublin, Ireland. Yeah, you guessed it. That boy, Conor McGregor, is back after his hiatus, after his last fight. Uh, which was against Khabib, where he had unfortunately lost, if you're a fan. Or if you're not a fan, he got what he deserved, I guess you would say. <laughs> exactly. Against the All-American Cowboy Cerrone. Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And that's, that's pretty much it on the wise. card. That's it. That's the whole card. The, well, the prelims got really good prospects, but the rest of this card is a massive disappointment. And it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. You, are we gonna save that card for? Are we gonna save that uh, fight for last? Because I know you have some match that, like, some matchups that you want to speak on real quick. Yeah, we could do a real quick rundown of why I think the prelim on ESPN is actually better than anything on the main card. There's a couple okay. of fights. There's a couple of prospects, is what I want to say. Um, the entire prelim. So if we look at the card. The entire main card is a bunch of fighters who have been underperforming for the last couple of years, fighting each other Ooh. and trying to get their mojo back. That's it. Ooh. That's what we got. <laughs> you know, uh, well, shout out to Carlos Diego Fajera. He has had a nice run, but okay. that's it. And nobody knows who he is really because he hasn't beaten any of the big names. So I don't even that. know who he is. Yup, yup. You might remember him from when Dustin Poirier knocked him out years ago. That's about it. There you go. But on the prelim, all four fights are interesting prospects against really talented UFC veterans who haven't quite made the leap from being a journeyman to a real contender. And the top two fights on this prelim are two of the most intriguing prospects in the entire UFC. So that's why I'm real interested in this. And they're fighting against two legitimate tests. So I'm pretty hype about it. Okay, so the so first the new school versus the old school. Yes, sir. And these should have been on the main card. These should have had the Conor McGregor bump so that we could try to establish some new stars. But I get it. It's a little early for them. So to get into the first one, Andre Feely is fighting Sadiq Youssef. And I think that could potentially be the fight of the night, to be honest with you. Do you feel like UFC? Okay, so they don't put them on the they don't put them on the main card. But do you feel like there could be spoilers as far as will these vets just win? And that's why the UFC was like, damn, if we put them on the main card, we don't want these guys to be outmatched. And, and you know, these vets absolutely spoil, spoil the, the, the the prospects. Yes, sir. That is the big worry. That's one hundred percent it. So I think. What we have, and I'll say this about the entire card because we usually talk betting. I would not bet on a favorite in any fight on this entire card. So that just to throw that in there. 
And Sadiq Youssef versus Andre Feely is the most interesting of those because Andre Feely has a mixed record, but he's only just turned 29 and he has looked like his best self recently. Whereas Sadiq Youssef is pretty green. He's pretty new. But Youssef has the so, the highest potential on the entire card to me. I think he could be a future champion if he puts it all together. Oh, yes, sir. So okay. Yusuf, Yusuf what has, weight class? Uh, this would be 145. Okay. So uh, we're talking about you got to get through the the gauntlet at 145. There's Korean Zombie. There's Max Holloway. Uh, Volkanovski, of course, the champ. But. Yusuf has knockout power with a right hand. He's explosive, and he has beaten other really good prospects. Gabriel Martinez uh, Benitez is a real interesting fighter. He was a runner-up on Tough. Yusuf knocked him out ugly. And then Shaman Moraes is one of my favorite guys. He got released recently, but he has never been an easy out. And Yusuf put it on him for three rounds. Uh... Andre Feely, on the other hand, has fought everybody. This dude uh, started in the UFC in 2013. He was 22 years old. His second fight was Max Holloway. He's fought Yair Rodriguez. It was a war. He got knocked out after an eye poke in that fight, but I thought he was winning or at least neck and neck in that fight. And he's probably the long... He might be one of the longest running alpha team alpha male fighters. So he comes from a good school... He's starting to put everything together. And I, the one thing about Yusuf hasn't fought somebody as experienced as this dude. And he hasn't fought somebody who has the amount of diversity of attack. So Andre Feely could wrestle with him, could try and make things interesting. But I'm telling you, when I say that I think Yusuf has that champion upside, I really do. He's He can be special, but this is the fight that gives him the will know after this one if he's ready to really start testing himself and climbing the rankings the top 15 you know okay so Andre Feely in other words the gatekeeper right now at the moment but and for Feely this is kind of the same thing because he's a 29 year old he does have a very long uh history in the UFC but it's because he started young and to me uh late 20s early 30s is your prime in the UFC in other sports we usually think like 25, 26. Not in the UFC. In in combat sports in general, I think the mental aspect of combat sports is so much more important that I tend to think that when you're 30, 31 and you've reached that, that certain zone or you've seen enough, that's when you start to really see a guy come into his own. And Feely, there has been a little bit of that. He's won four of his last five fights and the one loss is a real controversial split decision to Michael Johnson. And Michael Johnson's no joke either and a legit bet. So he's he's a test, a true test. Okay. 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 So if you had to put it, if you had a guess or your best prediction is? So my pick would be Sadiq Youssef with a three-round decision. And I think the difference is Youssef's power is that Feely has to fight a perfect fight and avoid this cannon of a right hand for 15 minutes. And I know he's good. I know he has been somewhat elusive, but he's a hittable guy. He's been knocked out. And I think what will happen is Feely will win the majority of a round, but Yusuf will have the better moments where he threatens to finish the fight. And I think that should be enough to take two out of three and win the fight. But... The lines on this fight are ridiculous, and I would not dare bet on Sadiq Youssef in any which way just because of how big the odds are compared to how close I think the fight is. Oh, who is it in favor of? It's in favor of Youssef. Oh, actually, no. This is the one where the lines are super close. Now that I think about it, I think uh, Youssef's a tight favorite, but I still wouldn't bet on him because I wouldn't take the risk of somebody as experienced as Feely. The next one is the one that I want to talk about where the line is absolutely bonkers. Okay, and I'm going with Yusuf as well. I I like to see a new prospect. I I hear what you're saying about uh, Andre coming up into his prime, but I never never thought Feely had it. I thought he was a cool kid, but I could just see him kind of being, I don't know if it's because of the tattoos, 
<laughs> but the second coming of Cub Swanson. I just think he's a good. <laughs> I think he's a good fighter. I think he can hold his own. I don't see him ever being the like the top three guy, top three. I think mm-hmm. he's a top ten fighter in the UFC, but top five, I would be like, ah, eh. top three, I, I don't see that. So I, I think he's a, and I it should be ranked, but if he's not, I think he's a, I think he's a decent top ten fighter, um, or around there, like more obviously the lower end of the t- the ten than the the t- upper upper part. Yeah, I agree with that. I what my thinking is is in a less in less of a competitive division, Feely could make a lot of noise. I think he's still a second prime type of candidate as in when he's 32, 33, certain things might click for him. He might find more power. But right now I I totally agree with you, Kosher. Uh top 15 to top 10, top maybe top 8 is where I think his upside sits. But if he can beat somebody with the gifts and tools that Sadiq Youssef has, I think it makes the conversation a lot more interesting. Okay. What's this yep. next fight that you're saying is crazy with these odds? Fam, Macy Barber is a minus 1,000 favorite against Roxanne Modafieri. And Macy Barber has an 8 0 record, and her toughest opponent has been Hannah Cyphers. And I don't know if people listening who Hannah Cyphers is. Yes, exactly. She has, she's fought Jillian Robertson, Hannah Cyphers, and JJ Aldrich. Those are her three UFC fights. They've been dominant wins, but none of those fights are convincing me that you're able to defeat one of the most experienced, uh, you know, most. Uh, she's fought for a belt. She's been around against everything. So I think it's a little overblown when you have Roxanne Modafieri six hundred to like six to one, and you have Macy Barber negative ten to one. You know. But I will say there's a reason. There is a reason for it. I'll give you that. I just think Vegas is exaggerating. Do you think? Okay, so is it so? Basically. Either total domination, uh, you know, 10 8 rounds, 10 7 rounds, or yeah. maybe not coming out of the first round. That That's what they seem to be expecting. And I get it. Macy Barber has more strength than anybody in the division, I think. You Called know, she's out Paige uh, Van Zandt, right? Yep. She, she's been trying to get a Paige Van Zandt fight forever. She uh, slid in Paige's husband's DMs. Uh, she's been doing a lot of that type of self-promotion and she's also had dominant victories it's just that the women she's defeated are not even the same in the same stratosphere as Roxanne or let alone anyone in the top 15 so it's good that Macy is dominating unranked opponents but now you're talking about a top 10 opponent who has a ton of experience and the when we watch Macy Barber fight, she's not impeccably skilled. She is overpowering women. She is dominating them with her strength and her forcefulness. But that doesn't mean that uh, Roxanne doesn't get the fight to the ground and submit her with some simple mistake. Or that if Roxanne continues to be um, clever with her footwork, that Roxanne can't even possibly avoid her for a couple of rounds and make the shit interesting. Macy Barber's one sweep away from an upset, basically. And I don't know that she can defend it because I haven't seen enough. What everybody's counting on is that Macy Barber will be so strong that Roxanne, that no matter how good Roxanne's technique is, it won't matter. And I just haven't seen enough to make that prediction. So I actually do think that there's more of a potential for an upset in this fight than some of the other fights on the card. Yeah, Macy Barber, you know, to me is brute strength as well. Uh, I think that can carry her to beat the fights she needs to win. But I do believe that uh, what she's at 125. Yep, 125. Yeah. See, so so 125 is obviously the, one of the newer divisions um, in UFC for the females and uh, for the women and the champ obviously being Bullet, Valentina, Shevchenko. With that being said, 
Macy's very green, so I I don't know too much of the about the other fighter. Uh, mm-hmm. I understand what you're saying. So when you paint the picture, I get it. And Paige is an easy fight for her if she were to fight Paige, because I think yes. she's just. I understand that. I understand where she's going with that. This mm-hmm. lady as well. I I I I, I know. I know how Macy should win the fight. I don't know what's going to happen. I think she'll, I mean, with the odds saying that I, she probably won't get out of the first round or maybe she'll, go, she'll stop her in the second, early in the second. But I want to ask you, is this, do you, do you think the UFC will give her like a safe Norcup type push? Do you think the UFC is behind her? Yeah. Okay. I think so. What I think happened with this fight is Roxanne doesn't have the uh, cleanest stand up technique. And she doesn't have, she actually doesn't have strength to compete with the strongest fighters in the division. So they're counting on that. And I don't think she has the striking to get Macy off her. So what they're thinking is Macy walks her down, Macy traps her, and Macy overpowers her. My thing okay. is, watch for a leg lock, watch for a scramble, watch for any of those situations on the ground. Uh, Roxanne is a very talented jujitsu player. And to me, when you're looking at somebody who's really raw and has been able to get away with certain bad habits, the two things you watch for is if they run into somebody who's elusive, who has good footwork, or if they run into somebody who is a jiu-jitsu player. And I think yeah, Roxanne has sure. that second part. Yup, yup. Yeah. So if styles make fights, yeah, Macy has the style that you count on. But I just think we haven't seen enough good habits out of Macy for me to completely count Roxanne out of this. Yeah, yeah. She's too green of a fighter. But she still should win if, if, if you know, depending on how... If, Uh oh. Yeah. I got you. I got you. All right. Well, with that being said, I'm going with Macy winning in the second round. That that's a good prediction. I like I'm so I have Roxanne has my heart. She's such a sweetheart. She's a legend in this game. She's been around forever. So I'm actually gonna go with Roxanne. Woo! And I'm gonna go Roxanne, with a first... Roxanne. Yup, yup. And I'm gonna go with like the a leg lock. I'm literally picking Roxanne by submission first round. If Macy's really good and she's able to just get out of that first round as a dominant person, then Roxanne's screwed. But what I'm imagining is potentially Macy gets reckless, Roxanne catches something, and I'm going with Roxanne by the upset. Screw it. I'm I'm taking a risk. Are you are you putting any cash on that? Uh, not more than ten dollars. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. But it'll pay out sixty. Oh. All right. So yep, yep. the next fight we got Alexa Grasso versus Claudia Gadelia. Thank you very much for pronouncing the last name because I was gonna say. Please read me. Give me this. <laughs> give me this. this. Claudia Gadelia. She. Okay. I know these fighters. Claudia Gladia is a tough out for anybody. She. She's kind of like, I guess, the refined Macy Barber in the sense. You know, she likes to use her brute force. She likes to use her wrestling. And she likes to take people down and just make it a dirty fight, especially for a girl. Then you have yes, Alexa. Sir. Grasso was more like a karate based, right? Um, and she's it's funny because like Alex, like if you look at Claudia, like they're both small in stature, but like I I, I want to say like when you look at Alexa, she looks a lot smaller. If that makes any sense, and to me, this is the fight that Alexa needs to win. But this is a fight to me that all, but Claudia needs to actually bulldoze Alexa. 
And I don't know. I, I, I was watching Embedded, the first episode, and Claudia seems a little bit more confident. Um, they didn't have Alexa, so I don't know where she's at mentally. And I, I know Alexa is a prospect that the UFC is trying to push. Her and yeah, Rodriguez, you know, from Mexico to get more uh, Mexican fans. And I do like Alexa. I do think she's talented. She had for, I think for the UFC to keep betting on her, she has to win this fight. But Claudia, this is a perfect fight also for Claudia to impose her will and to get back into where, you know, her winning ways. What do you think? Yeah, I feel you on that completely. I think, so it's kind of a tale of uh, two different stories, whereas I feel like Claudia Gadelia has been a little bit disappointing recently in her recent performances. Uh, she's got, like, a real debatable win over Carla Esparza. She's got a loss to Nina Ansaroff, where she kind of couldn't get off and gassed a little. And then she's got the random Marcos win, which is another one that I think is questionable. Alexa Grasso, her recent performance, it's a win over random Marcos. She's got uh, a loss to Tatiana Suarez, which is kind of like, you know, like you said, she's a she looks like one of the smaller fighters in the division. She's got like this whole girl next door cuteness to her that's like, damn, right. this pretty ass girl, but she's tough. But, uh, and then after that, she actually, uh, she had a real debatable split decision loss to Carla Esparza. I thought she looked better against Esparza than Claudia did, to be honest with you. And on top of that, she actually beat your girl, Carolina Kovalkiewicz, and that's her best performance in the UFC. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody that beats Kovalkiewicz, you get to at least, you, you prove that you have something there. Um. Obviously, Gadelia is the next step up that ladder. I think um, if we were to put their skill sets up, I would probably be assuming Claudia Gadelia wins the fight. But Grasso is very young. She's a developing fighter who has been building up. And I think she has looked gradually more comfortable in the octagon. So I think she has a good opportunity to make this an interesting fight if Gadelia is still stuck where she's been at. And what that is Correct. to say is, you know, like, we we know what Gadelia looks like in her prime. Going neck and neck with Joanna Jonjacic. Right. That's a huge. That, that's a monster. But when's the last time Gadelia has looked like that? Right. You know, right. It, it's, right. it's real tough to say. So if we're talking about at their top, at their peak that we've seen them, Gadelia definitely should be the pick. But if we're talking about recent performance, I actually start to lean towards Lex Grasso getting the upset. Okay. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, Grasso, split decision, victory is what I'm thinking. And I think she makes it a tough fight. And Gadelia has had gas tank issues. And until she shows me, she can fight three full rounds. I'll probably be picking a lot of split decisions against her. I, and you know what? I, okay. So to be fair, I, I I understand where you're coming from with that, and I knew about I knew that Claudia hasn't been a trailblazer as of recently, and Alex Alexa is actually handling her own, and I and I do specifically remember that that. Uh, that fight with um, Tantiana Suarez. So, yeah. so you're, I, yeah. I. The thing is, is that I don't know where she's at. I want to say this. I think uh, for me, I would still put Claudia from what I just saw from that embedded. I, I want to believe her. Um, I don't want to count Alexa out, but did she? Did you? Did you say she lost her last fight? Yeah, it was. It was debatable though. I actually had ugly, edged right? the fight to her. It no, was, I had edged it to her. It was. Okay. It was. 
it was ugly in that Carla Esparza always makes a fight ugly and you know you're grappling for a lot of it but I actually thought Grasso looked really good against somebody who tries to wrestle a lot okay okay I remember I got I remember that I think I do remember that I think I do yep. remember. so it's you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna you're well you're getting the second dose of that with with uh Claudia Delia. I, I don't I don't see she has the blueprint and I think they're they're putting they're putting her through the gauntlet. I think they're putting Alexa through the gauntlet and she has to show that she has that grit. She can fight wrestlers, she can fight, you know, strikers. And why not? Why not? So for me, I, I'm gonna go with Claudia. Mm-hmm. But I, I I do remember how how Alexa was performing against Carla. And if this was a good fight if she has learned and she has adjusted good but if she hasn't then I don't expect her to win I feel you 100% on that bro I don't I, I don't expect her to win but this is actually I like how they come back with a, a, a fighter I think Claudia is better than Carla so it's you know I, I think that uh, it's gonna be interesting and, and Claudia's gone against Rose so, I got I like I like I like I like Claudia. I like Claudia in this fight. Yeah, Claudia's definitely fought the top of the top, which makes it definitely um, props to her. I think she's kind of. I want to see her get back to that level. It would be nice to see that. But you're not taking her, are you? Nope, I'm a split decision, but I'm taking my girl Alexa Grasso, girl next door. What's up, Alexa? Call me. Uh, uh, okay, okay, yeah, nah, nah, I feel you on that. I'm not, I'm not mad at it, <laughs> but, but, uh, all right, all right, we gonna see, we gonna see. So you, you picking, you, all right, all right, okay, you picking with the upset. And then you're picking with Alexa. All right, now I don't know if that's an upset as well, but we'll see. Uh, last but not least, oof, proper whiskey himself versus Budweiser. Yes, sir. He's got oh. a special can made for him. Oh, that's cool. Let, let's also remind everybody. I was like, remember, we have to say this. So. UFC decided to up the charge on the pay-per-view guys starting this year, starting with this card, this card specifically. You know, you guys got to pay for Connor's eighty million dollars quote unquote, right? So, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, that's what he thinks he's gonna make after this fight. So, um, with that being said, please, guys, just just know that. They're, they they are they are going to charge more starting this year. Um, proper whiskey, aka Conor McGregor, has you know come out of his shell, started doing more interviews, and basically had a little tell all talking about hey, like I was drinking, maybe had a time of his life during the Khabib camp, wasn't as focused, and you know that's what it was. And, you know, I had a talk with you on the side, and you were like, I can understand that. And I was ready to bash the dude, because <laughs> to me, I was like, well, dude, you you should have known you were going to go through war. Like, this, like, this is this guy that does not only like your camp, is arguably your freaking Achilles heel when it comes to fighting. So, I don't know what the fuck you're thinking, but you know, Conor McGregor talked to had a I don't know maybe close to an hour interview with Ariel Hawani, and basically talks about his life and what he's been doing and how he's preparing right now. He's been sober leading up to this fight. That's cool, you know. He, he, he said he's been focused and training on his endurance and whatnot. Hey. Okay, let's let's get down to it, guys. Yeah. To me, Connor has the X factor because of his left hand and his power, which is what we all know as common 
or gener- uh, generally what we think when we think about Connor. And so there's that. But Cowboy actually has the tools to beat Connor. Now, will Cowboy execute the tools? It's kind of like Eddie Alvarez. Did Eddie Alvarez execute the tools? <laughs> no. But it's there. Cowboy can attack the leg with his leg kicks. Cowboy has. I have the last time I've seen Cowboy on his back is shit. Maybe the last time we seen Jose Aldo use the jujitsu. Right. So it's like it. It's there though. Will he do it? Is Cowboy gonna be like, you know what? We're gonna make this a stand-up fight, and we're just gonna fight. Was that was that some stipulations that we will never know about? People think that, you know, Cowboy's going to take a dive to make Conor look good so we can put UFC back on the map. Or at least, I shouldn't say UFC, but at least Conor back on the map. Who knows? But to me, in my pit, I don't think Cowboy is going to actually fight Conor the way he should. And somebody told me something hella, hella, hella intuitive. Uh Uh-huh. It'd be better for Cowboy, excuse me, it would be better for Connor to knock out Cowboy in the first round than it would be for him to try to fight him in the fifth round. Cowboy is a notoriously slow starter. And I didn't think about that, which is damn true, though. And I think I think Connor comes out to, you know, comes out and trying to prove something. And I think he tries to take out Cowboy in the first two rounds. Mm-hmm. So, to me, if Cowboy were to implement his tools, that means he needs to be on his bike early. He needs to stray away from that left. He needs to keep moving. Don't get into too many exchanges. They like kicking. Keep Connor on his back toes. Don't, don't keep Connor guessing, but I would say the keys to to keys for Cowboy would be leg kick the hell out of Cowboy, or excuse me, leg kick the hell out of Connor, keep rotating to your left, which is away from Connor's left, right, hold on, no, excuse me, rotate to your right, so you're away from your right, left, Um, and, uh, and then, and then, I believe he should threaten for the takedown. Once Connor, once Connor goes like throws his left hand, once Connor throws his left hand and he misses, try to go for a takedown, because Connor is gonna put power behind his left, which will give you if you match that force, he won't be able to 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 hold him like he he's not gonna hold himself. So he you'll be. If you have enough force behind your takedown, you're gonna catch him off guard and, and bring him to the floor. I don't, I don't think Connor is who he thinks he is in his in his head. I've said that a while ago, but I think now is the perfect time to get Connor because, to be honest, if he 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 calls it season, this is his season. If Connor is one of those fighters that gets better by fighting, which he probably has shown, then why not knock him off before he actually gets into a role? I don't yep. see it happening though. I, Remy, I, I got, I got actually Connor getting him out in the second round. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and you've said something in our uh, conversations when we've discussed this fight that I think is a really important observation. It's something I kind of didn't even think about is it's not the left hand to the head that Cowboy has to worry about. It's the left hand to the body. Yes. Yes. Cowboy is hella suspect to the body. (laughs) Yeah. Ask ask Rafael Dos Santos. Yup. Or or Anthony Pettis. So that that's an observation you gave me where I was like, man, you're right. That, That could be trouble. The uh, one thing I want to mention is somebody sent me, it might be my boy Dane, uh, boxing coach, shout out to my boy Dane. Um, 
he sent me a clip of Cowboy being asked if he plans to wrestle at all and Cowboy saying nah I like to fight and you're not gonna tell me how I'm gonna fight somebody I'm gonna fight my how I want to fight and to me the most interesting thing about this fight is that it's these unpredictable aspects of the fight that make it so so exciting to me at their best Cowboy at his peak versus Connor at his peak I definitely take Connor. I think stylistically, Connor's built for Cowboy. Um, not just the power in the left hand, but Connor likes to take away your space. He likes to get you uncomfortable. He's a fast starter. Cowboy's a slow starter. Um, Cowboy also doesn't do the best with the mental pressure in fights at times. And Cowboy needs a little bit of time to get comfortable. But the last time we saw a Connor fight was almost two years ago and he didn't look sharp back then and there are certain red flags about this one there's red flags and there's positive signs so the red flags to me are deciding the fight at 170 was a little sketchy he Connor's you know he's got two fights at 170 and he arguably lost both then you go to the fact that Connor uh, Kavanaugh came out Connor's coach has come out and said that Connor's basically the head coach of this camp he's running this camp and I don't know that I, I I just don't trust that you should have a coach that's willing to tell you when you're doing something when you're screwing up or if you're taking the wrong step you should be able to have your coach yell at you when you're slacking and for Kavanaugh to be praising Connor the way he was it's just it feels like, and you sent me a, a post from John Jones that mentioned this. It feels like Connor continues to be surrounded by yes men, and I, I'm a huge fan of Kavanaugh, so I don't want this to come across too like disrespectful. But it just feels like everybody's at the point of Connor. You're right. I don't want to piss off Connor. Let's let him handle things, and that's what worries me about this fight. If we were just going tools styles what they look like at their best Conor McGregor hands down what makes it more interesting is we haven't seen Conor at his best in the octagon since 2016 we are actually at his best period because after that was Floyd Mayweather knocks him out uh Khabib dominates the you know that has a pretty dominant performance to be fair uh <laughs> as dominant as Khabib has been, Connor may have had the most competitive fight with Khabib we've seen since at least Ally Aquinta. But uh there's just a lot of there's a lot of questionable things going on. And I you know what? I'll give Connor this. He doesn't look <laughs> he doesn't look coked out. <laughs> he doesn't look he doesn't look as out of control. He looks like he might have reined it in. And you had mentioned that, that I had said the partying aspect of being a champion has gotten to other guys. So John Jones mentioned that he was partying hard. People were saying he was living out of his car because he was partying so hard prior to some fights while he was a dominant fighter. Uh, GSP got knocked out by Matt Serra, who I don't think is in his league. And he said it was the belt got to me the success got to me so I do want to give Connor the benefit of the doubt in so much as if Connor needed a humbling there's nothing more humbling than having Khabib beat you up jump out of the octagon beat up your friends and his friends jump in and sucker punch you and get into it with you and then you have to take two years off there's nothing more humbling than you're facing lawsuits over uh, baby mama drama. It fell through, but you got to deal with that because of your actions. You've got accusations that are way more serious than that, which I'll, I I don't know how Ireland's laws go. I'm going to give him when we find out, we find out, and then I'll pass judgment. And there there's nothing that I'm going to say in Connor's defense about sucker punching some old man on a fucking on a effing stool on a freaking stool yeah I, I've been very 
I've been struggling with Connor's behavior and I need to see him show me that he's got it together not just in an interview with Ariel Hawani anybody can have a good interview with Ariel Hawani show me in the octagon that you're Connor who I remember from Eddie Alvarez with the pinpoint accuracy and you know everything's on point show me that and then I'll I'll give you that but for now uh to me the last time I saw Connor he looked way less than sharp and I'm I'm actually if I'm just going off recent performance I think Cowboys getting a raw deal Cowboys got two losses in a row yes those losses are to Tony Ferguson and Justin Gaethje those losses are to monsters Cowboy also has three fight of the night awards in the year 2019 like he didn't Cowboy has not done as badly as people like to make it out to be he beat Ally Aquinta, who gave Khabib probably the toughest fight of his UFC career. Maybe Gleason Tebow. And then he also uh, broke Mike Perry's arm and absolutely smoked Anthony Hernandez, who was a very promising prospect, still is a promising prospect. So I think there's a lot of things coming together, which is that Cowboy's a little older. He's lost to the best. But I don't know if Connor's the best anymore. I don't know if Connor's who he was. So for me, I've more and more thought that if I'm going to be objective going into picking who wins a fight, I would take my chances with the guy who's looked better more recently. And so it kind of makes me think, do I trust Connor's gas tank that was bad even in his prime? I don't know. I, I doubt it. Do I do I go with the fact that Connor has advantages? Sure, Connor's tool set, everything about him in his prime is better, but I haven't seen his prime in four years. So I'm gonna go with Cowboy in the third round, TKO. But I'll give a big caveat to that, which is if Connor is what he's selling us, if he's back then Connor should win this fight in the first round. Connor should win with a left a left to the body, possibly something to follow it up. But I'm not picking Connor until he shows me it. So it's a little bit of saltiness over the way Connor has behaved, over what Connor became after he won his belts. But it's also me thinking If I was going to bet on somebody, I wouldn't pick somebody who hasn't looked good since 2016 when it's the year 2020. So I'm going with Cowboy. Third round TKO. Okay. And I, okay. So I was thinking in my head, I was like, ooh, there's another. One of Connor's favorite weapons, if if it's not his right hand, his left hand, it's actually a spinning back kick, which always, which always goes around the solar plex, the mid, the body, basically. And I could see that being something when when Cowboy gets if, if Cowboy starts backing up and going to the cage, I can see Connor trying to whip that out. And if it if it lands with, with Cowboy on the cage, get ready for a Connor rush. Connor will put paw paw his right hand out to try to try to like try to like blind Cowboy and then watch for lasers left. Mm-hmm. If to me, if Cowboy if both Cowboy and Connor were drunk, Cowboy would still lose because I don't think Cowboy <laughs> I don't think Cowboy realizes how powerful Connor's left is. And with that being said, I think Cowboy I think because Connor knows it's on, he's really gonna put power behind that left. To, which which is something you said, like that first round should be it. Yep, Look, to yeah. me, to me, I, I want to give Cowboy that first round, but he may not make it out of the first round. I, I'm thinking the first two. The stamina issue only, to me, will last, will only come into question if they go to the third and beyond. Um, I, I, I don't see that happening. 
what you were saying about the character of Connor and his recent actions, I want Cowboy to win if Cowboy were to use the tools. I just don't know about his body. His mind is willing, but I don't know if his body will. You you meant yeah, he did fight the two what the two like top five or four of the toughest fighters, uh, you know, at lightweight. Granted, sure, but he's very I don't know, man. It, it <laughs> that that Justin Gates you just looked bad. I know they they they're like, okay, we're gonna stand and bang. But that was first of all, Justin Gates you got dazed by Michael Johnson. Okay. And I don't know <laughs> I don't know if you I will get granted that was the first his first fight in the UFC. I love Justin, that fight. I do that fight. I mean, if you're a Justin Gaethje fan, there is no better fight than that because that fight was just unbelievable. Heart, grit, toughness, just what the freak was that? Um, if you're a Michael Johnson fan, you just you just retire right off the point. That doesn't make any damn sense. But <laughs> um, I don't know, dude. Like, just, like Justin Gaethje to me is a human wrecking ball. He's a walking CTE machine. So is Tony, Tony, Tony Ferguson, because these guys, they, they literally block punches with their face and just take all types of punishment and still win fights. Um, but again, what did Justin Gaethje do that Connor's going to do? Come straight at Cowboy. True. Take him out. So I, I, I don't, everybody knows that Cowboy doesn't get off in the beginning. And so it's perfect. This is you're gonna you're going to get some charged up Connor versus a guy who who knows how important this fight is. I still do not think he's gonna rise to the occasion at the time he should. Now, if this fight was going third, fourth, fifth, okay, yes, Cowboy is now game. He is he is focused. He understands what's going on. Okay, but it's not gonna start in the third, fourth, fifth. It started in the first and second. It started in the first and. Cowboy, for whatever reason, say it, it has, the car has to go to 100 miles per hour before he shifts to second or third, and he doesn't have that time, dude. He is. unfortunately, Connor's not gonna give him that luxury. Connor's not gonna play with this dude and let him fight until the third round. Yes, Cal- yes, Connor has stamina issues, and he will always have stamina issues. That's why I think he's doing 170. Mm-hmm. Um, also, to see how he can handle power, I guess. But I don't know. He's not gonna. Uh, I don't see how he's being a Jorge or or Usman. Usman, but, he's crazy. Yeah. So regardless, I mean, whatever Connor is planning, it is what it is. But I think he takes out Cowboy, and honestly, again, I believe that Cowboy has the tools to beat Connor. At their prime, I would still go with Connor, but that doesn't yep. mean that Cowboy, even at their prime, that Cowboy couldn't take out Connor. I just think that, again, you said something that was interesting, the mind games. You know, Cowboy went on record as saying he doesn't think that Connor will go there, talk about him or his family. But if Connor did, what then? Right? Cowboy said, oh, it'll be a fight in the lobby. Forget the octagon. Man, I, I again, like I said, if these guys were totally drunk, I still think Connor would win. I just think that Connor has. And I'm, I'm Grant, look, I don't believe Connor is who he says he is. I believe that he is a good fighter. When I say he's a great fighter, I would say that to me, he's a, a B plus, A minus fighter. Okay. Good. I, I believe that he has, I believe he has excelled. I believe that he was given the right opportunity, but I still don't think he. The best at 155. I don't see he's not being it to be. I have him a I have a hard I have a hard time seeing him beat Tony Ferguson. Justin Gaethje wasn't around when and back when he first started, but now I I have him a, I have a hard time seeing him beat Justin Gaethje. Uh, who else is in that top five? Uh, I think. Who is four and five? Oh, Poirier. Yeah, so I, I think, okay, see, see, Poirier is a, I think, obviously, Poirier has matured, but I think he could be Poirier on his best day. He could be Poirier on Poirier's yeah. best day. Uh, 
he could probably be Justin Gaethje on Justin uh, on their both best days, but that one I, I can I can see I can see Justin winning. Uh, and then at one seventy, I don't even know why we go there. The only person that I, I think is a perfect matchup for him would be Col- Colby, and 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 he would have to watch that Colby doesn't grab him. But I think he will be able to. He'll be elusive enough to stop Kobe. But Nate Diaz, I still think that he would have trouble with Nate Diaz um, on any weight. And uh, what's it called? Kevin Lee. If Kevin Lee can get his act together, we'll give him a fit. Uh, who else did I want seventy? I mean, it, it's like to me, Connor just had the right program. Knew who who to pick. I'm not again. I'm not. I'm not saying this guy is not good, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm never was that he was great, okay, and mm-hmm. and, but he will be good enough Saturday night to beat Cowboy. That's what I'm saying right now. Word, word. I respect that. I, to me, actually, I think Connor in his prime. I just think it's a short prime, is really good. I think he's best that I've seen when he ran through Aldo, Mendez, Poirier, uh, Max Holloway, but I also think that timing did play a role in that, you know? It's before his prime Max, before his prime Poirier, um, Mendez on short notice, Aldo in his head, so there's definitely there's reasons to question it, and I also think that what we've seen from Connor post title post winning his belts has been such a disappointment that I'm just like man get my faith back and then I'll start picking you again and I think I I rate his prime higher than you do but I also uh, I'm just not trusting him especially consider that two years out of the octagon four years since he looked great how long does it take him to get back to sharp when he's fighting somebody like Cowboy who fights four fights a year on a slow year. So I, that's the one other thing. I, I, I just think there's too much money yeah, riding there's too, on it. There's too much money behind a Connor comeback that him that he loses like this. True. Like like and I mean, yeah, like Masvidal can give him a pity fight or <laughs> He can go to one. He can go to one fifty-five and fight Nate Diaz for a trilogy or whatever. If he does lose the Cowboy, and it would it would still sell out a lot, but he would lose all type of credibility to even sniff a title, which is what he's been trying to draw at. And he I said think, two, huh? He said he wants both belts, one seventy and one fifty-five. He's out of his mind. And and the baddest mother. Uh, well, the BMF. So I mean, you know, again, like he he has to he has to finish his breakfast. He has to he has to get through Cowboy. I think he will. I think I think I think the UFC, you know, no, he the, everybody's putting him on there, and I think he'll do it. I don't want it, but you know, it is yeah, what man. it is. It is what it is, man. I think it's a perfect time to take Cowboy out. Why not? So. Uh, let me throw this in. Do you think that the fact that this main card is so trash, <laughs> not trash, it's competitive, but it's underwhelming? Do you think, uh, to me, it's like Bad maybe they don't, Connor. like maybe they're a little bit worried. They Let's cash out on Connor by putting a bunch of fighters who aren't quite there and try to establish them again and get one more payday out of each of them prospects on the card because I, I'm so disappointed in the rest of the card. Holly Holm versus Raquel Pennington is the worst co-main event in the last probably two years. I We didn't even talk about that fight. That fight doesn't even interest me at all. I yeah. would say, I, 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 and I hope Holly Holm wins because I don't care for Raquel. But I, I, let, me, I, let, me, let me say this. I don't know how much the UFC has been marketing the fight. I, I, I've seen them post a lot of vintage Connor. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of 
weird and kind of scary. It's like, damn, like you got no new footage, you ain't got no new sound bites. He ain't really even say much. Cause everything that everything that's been recent of him is not good. And, yeah. Um, and I, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what. First of all, when I heard the fight was going off, it was like January. It was like some random date, and it, it, it seemed awkward. It seemed weird, but. It is what it is. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. There's that. You know. There's a bunch of chance that he loses, but I think they were just trying to make sure that he gets the money that they like a reasonable amount. And they couldn't really afford. They didn't want to afford uh, to, to pay to pay him um, walk. Or pay everybody and his walk. Yes, sir. So, so they did that, but I don't know. I don't know, man. You think you, you're thinking something? I don't know. It's like I'm really disappointed in the rest of the card they built around a Conor McGregor fight. They could, of course. The UFC has done a bad job of building up stars for years. We always mentioned uh, Mighty Mouse, how they blew it, but. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of like, I don't know. They didn't take any chances on this card. They put people with somewhat of a name, but the best name on this card is Anthony Pettis. Besides uh, the main event. And he's on the bottom of the card because he has been struggling. Right. I so I just, what's the strategy? I don't get it. I, I, everything about this card, I don't really get. And then you mentioned... They're trying to charge us more money. I already paid for an ESPN Plus uh, subscription. I'm just, I'm very disappointed in what the UFC is putting out there right now. Um, I'm very, like, nihilistic. I'm very cynical about where this is all going. And I feel like my big worry is that they're just trying to cash out one last time. And that's why they threw Cowboy in. Let's throw him a bone. And if he wins, we know we'll get three more fights out of him this year. Hmm. I it's it's a bizarre situation, dude. I, I uh, again, pe- there people have asked if Cowboy's gonna take a dive, and he kind of you know he got offended. At yeah. Him. I don't know, dude. It, it, it's uh, I think it's a handpicked fight by Connor. Obviously, Connor's after uh, after Cowboy had smoked that kid Aaron that you mentioned earlier last year, basically almost a year ago. Cowboy was like, hey man, Connor was like, hey man, we should fight. And, you know, there was rumors that they were going to fight in the summertime and never went through. And now it's manifesting. But I think the timing is more prime for Connor. Um, uh huh. Yep. Again, they, they could have put this on like on the weekend of the Super Bowl or like, you know, the weekend before in Miami or something or, or on the Saturday. But they, I don't know, dude. It, it, it's. It's a little bizarre. Maybe, maybe because Cal, maybe because Connor has all this bad press around him, they didn't want to market it that big. I don't know. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. I don't know. So they, so they, they so they're, they're just trying to buy time. Connor beats these cases or whatnot. That hey, it is what it is. But he he hasn't done himself any favors. Yeah. So. But well, I think I think we all can agree they're not gonna pull out, so the fight should happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But any anything else you want to tell the people before we uh, shake, man? Uh, not really. You know, I'm trying to put together a podcast with a couple of like experts in their fields, a BJJ Muay Thai and a boxer. I'm trying to get at least two of them in the building for a podcast where we talk about what's going to come up in the future on the uh, the Fans Perspective podcast. But, bro, it's always a pleasure to be uh, recording with you, my dude. It's I'll always a pleasure, and I look forward to this year complaining yeah. about the UFC and <laughs> making predictions. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Real quick, we know John Jones' the fight's coming up next as well. I'll be interested. Uh, Rampage lost against Fedor uh, earlier, up, which was just a, it hurt me so bad because I love Fedor, but I love Rampage way, 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 way more, and it was like a no contest, and I mean, when I say no contest, it's just he just 
I don't know what happened. Rampage just didn't look himself at all. And um, looks like Fedor's retiring after that because he should be satisfied. Rampage needs to go back down to lightweight, light heavyweight, excuse me. Or just, I mean, just chill, bro. Like, he, I hope you made money. I hope everything's great. I love Rampage, man. He's one of the two guys that brought me in beside Anderson Silva. Um, and so, it, it sucks to see him go out like that. Um, Anthony Pettis suing Usada because he, oh. he cut his hand on glass when he was giving samples to test pre-fight of the Nate Diaz thing. That's crazy. We don't, there's not too much to say. I mean, I don't know if we got any quick tidbits before we leave, but that's just insane. It's like Usado, everything about Usado has been disappointing from the jump. And I just feel like this is another ridiculous story that comes out of the Usada camp. And I, we, we were better off before Usada, if I'm being honest. Did they clean up the sport? I can't tell. And everything that I've seen is just decent fighters and up and coming fighters getting suspended. John Jones and Brock Lesnar fighting when even when they pop. So it's like, what's the point? So I, I'm done with Usada. Anthony Pettis, I hope you make bank. <laughs> <laughs> Let the people know where they can find you at, man. <laughs> Y'all can find me at, at J4Remy. That's J, the number four, R-E-M-I. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. And I'm always promoting the fans perspective is my other podcast, you know. And uh, thank you for always having me. And thank you for anybody listening, you know. Yes, sir. And then you guys can find me at Culture, F-T-E-S-W-L. And then obviously the main Twitter is at F-T-E-S-W-L. Everybody stay blessed. Stay positive. Happy New Year. We out. Peace. Peace.